10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, hit. The unconventional nature of the UFO problem. To both laymen and scientists, the impressive progress that science has made towards understanding our total environment prompts doubt that there could be machine-like objects of entirely unconventional nature moving through our atmosphere, hovering over automobiles, power installation, cities and the like, yet all the while going unnoticed by our body scientific. Such suggestions are hard to take seriously, and I assure you that until I had taken a close look at the evidence, I did not take them seriously. We have managed to so let our preconceptions block serious consideration of the possibility that some form of alien technology is operating within our midst that we have succeeded in simply ignoring the facts. And we scientists have ignored the pleas of groups like NICAP and APRO who have for years been stressing the remarkable nature of the UFO evidence. Abroad, science has reacted in precisely this same manner, ignoring as nonsensical the report material gathered by private groups operating outside the main channels of science. I understand this neglect all too well. I was just one more of those scientists who almost ignored those facts, just one more of those scientists who was rather sure that the situation could really not exist, one more citizen rather sure that official statements must be basically meaningful on the non-existence of any substantial evidence for the reality of UFOs. The UFO problem is so unconventional, involves such improbable events, such inexplicable phenomenology, so defies ready explanation in terms of present day scientific knowledge, has such a curiously elusive quality in many respects that it is not surprising that scientists have not taken it very seriously. We scientists are, as a group, not too well oriented towards taking up problems that lie not just on the frontiers of our scientific knowledge, but far across some gulf whose very breadth cannot be properly estimated. These remarks are made here to convey viewpoints that will probably prove to be correct when many more scientists begin to scrutinize this unprecedented and neglected problem. The UFO problem is, if anything, a highly unconventional problem. It may be well to take note of some of the principal hypotheses that have been proposed at one time or another to account for UFOs. In seeking explanations for UFO reports, I like to weigh witness accounts in terms of eight principal UFO hypotheses. One, hoaxes, fabrications, and frauds. Two, hallucination, mass hysteria, rumor phenomena. Three, lay misinterpretations of well-known physical phenomena, meteorological, astronomical, optical, aeronautical, etc. Four, semi-secret advanced technology, new test vehicles, satellites, novel weapons, flares, re-entry phenomena, etc. 5. Poorly understood physical phenomena. Rare atmospheric electrical or atmospheric electrical effects, unusual meteoric phenomena, natural or artificial plasmoids, etc. 6. Poorly understood psychological phenomena. 7 extraterrestrial devices of some surveillance nature. 8. Spaceships bringing messengers of terrestrial salvation and occult truth. Hoaxes and fabrications do crop up, though in percentages 
far smaller numbers than many UFO scoffers seem to think. Some of the independent groups like APRO and NICAP have done good work in exposing certain of these. Although there have been a good deal of armchair psychologicalizing about unstable UFO witnesses with easy charges of hallucination and hysteria, such charges seem to have almost no bearing in the hundreds of cases I have now personally investigated. Hypothesis 3 misinterpretation of natural phenomena do explain many sincerely submitted UFO reports. But efforts to explain away almost the entirety of all UFO incidents in such terms have been based on quite unacceptable reasoning. Almost no one any longer seriously proposes that the truly puzzling UFO reports of close-range sightings of what appear to be machines of some sort are chance sightings of secret test devices, ours or theirs. The reasons weighing against hypothesis 4 are both obvious and numerous. That some still not understood physical phenomena of perhaps astronomical or meteorological nature can account for the UFO observations that have prompted some to speak in terms of extraterrestrial devices would hold some weight if they were if it were true that we dealt therein only with reports of hazy glowing masses comparable to say ball lightning or if we dealt only with fast moving luminous bodies racing across the sky in meteoric fashion not so, as I shall enlarge upon below. Jumping to hypothesis six, it seems to receive little support from the many psychologists with whom I have managed to have discussions on this possibility. Hypothesis six is poorly understood psychological phenomena. I do not admit it from consideration, but as my own witness interviewing has proceeded, I regard it with decreasing favor. As for hypothesis eight, spaceships bringing messengers of terrestrial salvation and occult truth, it can only be remarked that in all of the extensive literature published in support thereof, practically none of it has enough ring of authenticity to warrant serious attention. A bizarre literature of pseudo-scientific discussion of communications between benign extraterrestrials bent on saving the better elements of humanity from some dire fate implicit in nuclear weapon testing or other forms of environmental contamination is certainly obtrusive on any paperback stand. That literature has been one of the prime factors in discouraging serious scientist from looking into the UFO matter to the extent that that might have led them to recognize quickly enough that cultism and wishful thinking have essentially nothing to do with the core of the UFO problem. Again, one must here criticize a good deal of armchair researching done chiefly by the daily newspapers that enjoy feature writing the antics of the more extreme of such groups, a dis disturbing number of prominent scientists have jumped all too easily to the conclusion that only the nuts see UFOs. The seventh hypothesis, extraterrestrial devices of some surveillance nature, is a hypothesis that has been seriously proposed by many investigators of the UFO problem. Although there seems to be some evidence that this hypothesis was first seriously considered within official investigative channels in 1948, the first open defense of this hypothesis to be based on any substantial volume of evidence was made by Donald Kehoe in about 1950. His subsequent writings, based on far more evidence than was available to him in 1950, have presented further arguments favoring 
and extraterrestrial origin of the UFOs. Before I began an intensive examination of the UFO problem in 1966, I was disposed to strong doubt that the numerous cases discussed at length in Kehoe's rather dramatically written and dramatically titled books could be real cases from real witnesses of any appreciable credibility. I had the same reaction to a 1956 book written by Ruppelt, an engineer in charge of the official investigations in the important 1951-53 period. Ruppelt did not go as far as Kehoe in suggesting the extraterrestrial UFO hop hypothesis, but he left his readers little room for doubt that he leaned towards that hypothesis. I elaborate these two writers' viewpoints because within the past month I have had an opportunity to examine in detail a large amount of formerly classified official file material which substantiates to an almost alarming degree the authenticity and hence the scientific import of the case material upon which Kehoe and Ruppelt drew much of their discussions of UFO history in the 1947 through 1953 period. One of these sources has just been published by NICAP and constitutes, in my opinion, an exceedingly valuable addition to the growing UFO literature. The defense of the extraterrestrial hypothesis by Kehoe and later many others has had little impact on the scientific community which based its write-off of the UFO problem on press accounts and official assurances that careful investigations were turning up nothing that suggested phenomena beyond present scientific explanation. Hypothesis number seven has thus received short shrift from science to date. As one scientist who has gone to some efforts to try and examine the facts, I say that this has been an egregious, if basically unwitting scientific error. An error that must be rectified with minimum further delay. On the basis of the evidence I have examined and on the basis of my own weighing of alternative hypothesis, I now regard hypothesis 7 as the one most likely to prove correct. My scientific instinct, instincts lead me to hedge that prediction just to the extent of suggesting that if the UFOs are not of extra mundane origin, then I suspect that they will prove to be something very much more bizarre. Something perhaps even something of perhaps even greater scientific interest than extraterrestrial devices. Presented to Congress July 29, 1968 by Professor James E. MacDonald.